What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smithy with another GSD Mode podcast where every single week we interview top entrepreneurs and strip top badasses that they're dominating their space. These are people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create amazing, big, epic lives for themselves, for their families, as well as have a big impact on others while they exist. So today, you guys, we've got a really special guest on the show. This is a dude I've been, been, been trying to get on the show, waiting for to get on the show. So excited to have on this show. Uh, um, um, I mean, this, this dude's had a massive impact on my life. Um, and this, this stuff that this dude is doing is absolutely insane. So our guest today, you guys, is the founder of Wake Up Warrior, I'm the creator of Warrior Week, uh, host of Warrior uh, on Fire podcast, and uh, most recently, new author of the Warrior book. So, um, really stoked and honored to have Garrett J. White on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Bro, you got the fucking J. My wife missed the fucking J on my own podcast with her shot. I now introduce me. Garrett White. I was like, babe, did you seriously just miss the J? What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm, super, I'm super pumped to be here. I mean, dude, you and I haven't spent like a lot of time together in the last three years, you came to Warrior Week, we got to connect back then, and then you found the fire as part of that you needed to go create, which happens to a lot of guys that come into the experience. That was the whole point of Wake Up Warrior, is to give a man an impact and bounce him into a new place of possibility, and then you fucking hustled and took off it. So I'm, I'm excited to finally have the three years that we get to be back together again and be here on the, this platform, on your platform, and getting to share uh, some of the power that's come from both of our journeys, but uh, specifically what we've done here at Warrior. Yeah, I mean, and we'll get deeper into this as the podcast goes on, but it's it's one of the most intense, insane, eye-opening weeks that, that any human being can go through, you know, right? So, so um, I mean, if, if you want to get a fire lit, dude, it's the best place to go on the planet to do that, which again, we'll jump into. But before we get into that, dude, you know, I'm really intrigued to, uh, um, you know, to hear your story and share your story with our audience, you know, because people might see what you're doing today. This guy that's, you know, worth millions and millions, has this big falling, doing all this stuff, driving, driving a freaking sick Lambo, you know, right? Um, but it wasn't always this way. I mean, you were uh, a mortgage broker, ha- having decent success, nothing like you are today, but decent success. Then when the market crashed, um, you know, you lost everything and you went through a really deep, dark time and, and uh, had to dig yourself out, man. So, you know, walk us through, if we run the clocks, man, like, like how did how did the journey lead to, to where you are today with this? So I think the, the, the concept, and I'm going to wrap around the concept, and hopefully as you listen, it's like the concept connects with you because the concept and the principle connects, and then my story will actually have an impact. If you don't catch the concept, you just hear my story, it won't fucking matter. You'll miss the whole game, and you'll go, wow, oh, it was a great podcast. Thanks, Josh. You're amazing. Garrett, you're an asshole. I'm out of here, and whatever. You move on. <laughs> So here's the concept. The concept is this. There's this clicking, there's this clicking noise inside of you. Like it, it's there. And I call it the voice. Like there's this thing inside of you and me that's constantly speaking to us. And it's this clicking, this knocking, this, this tick tocking inside of us. And it's calling you and me to do shit to consider things, to ask better questions, to stop doing some things, to start doing some things. Now, some of the greatest depression I've experienced in my life came not from doing things that were, quote, wrong, bad, or wicked, or whatever. Nothing was like, oh, I did this shit, I shouldn't have done it. The greatest depression I've ever experienced came from not doing the shit that the voice inside of me, this clicking, this ticking, this knocking, I was not listening to. I wasn't doing what I knew I needed to do. And so as you hear parts of my story, and as Josh and I kind of go back today, like I want you to consider the inside of this particular podcast, one of the reasons why you plug in with Josh every single week and why you listen so intently, and hopefully today you can listen with even more intensity, that there's a moment inside of this conversation, it's going to be an unrelated moment, you're going to be sitting there, just like I was, on the sideline, on a Thursday, as a football coach and a PE teacher back in 2000. The night before homecoming, preparing my boys, I was a defensive coordinator. I was divorced. My son and I were estranged. He was living with his mother. She was remarried. I was glad she was remarried because that fucking marriage was a goddamn nightmare for me and her. Greatest gift ever was my son, who, by the way, is coming to Warrior Week 43. He has two more weeks prepared. He's a college kicker at the University of Ottawa. Him at 16 and I got back into a relationship and he only wants one thing, which is he wants to work for where I said the only person that could work on Warrior is a man who's passed the crucible, and he's taking that shit on. I have no idea what his experience is going to be. He's killing it right now, according to the trainers and coaches. 
So I'm sitting there though, this divorce guy and this thing, this thought comes inside of me. And the thought was really simple. Thursday afternoon, lights are on, boys are just in their helmets, their jerseys are on, their shorts are getting ready for the game the next day. Grass is cut, painted lines are on, they can still hear the mowers, the girls are over getting ready with the cheerleaders, getting ready for the game the next day, undefeated team getting into the playoffs. Like it was a big fucking deal. I felt great. It was my second season as a coach. And I got my arms crossed, my visor on. Under Armour was just getting kind of cool. It was like a little more fringe, like old school people. Like, what the fuck's this Under Armour? It was like cool yet. People were like, Nike, Nike. I was like, nah, man, I'm going to try this Under Armour mostly because it was like pretty much free and they were trying to get lots of coaches and people to wear it. So we were rocking it. And this question came in, which is like, is this all you were born to do? Like, and, and it, uh, it, it shook me. Like, it wasn't like I was looking for it. It just, like, this question hit me. And this is the piece I want you to catch from me or anyone that you ever listened to, is that guys like Josh and guys like myself and you, the only difference between men individuals who have created really big shit and people who don't create really big shit, Yes, it comes down to the work, but it's the work that they felt called to do, inspired by this voice inside of me and you. This thing that said, hey, consider for a second that the thing that you're thinking is the thing is not the thing. So fast forward, I get into mortgage and banking. I have an amazing experience. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I have no idea. I've never been an entrepreneur. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. My whole life changes. I figure I need to be a real estate investor. And if I'm really a real estate investor, I didn't know how to do that because I didn't have any real estate. I barely could afford the rent and home I was in. I was freaking out about committing to a 12-month cell phone contract with Cricket and at the gym at the same time for $20, $20, $40. Fuck, man, I was divorced. Half of my check was going to pay them for my son. I had no money, $1,200. Like, it was nothing. I had nothing. I make no money for six months in mortgages, trying to figure out how to cold call every single day, VA home loans off these big stack of veterans. We're lying. We're lying, by the way, over the phone that we're, hey, this is Gary J. White from New Breed of Mortgage, a department of the Veteran Affairs. And people are like, dude, you can't say that. I was like, oh, why couldn't I say that? They, like, they seem to listen a lot more when I say that. They're like, well, that's because you're fucking lying. And I was like, oh, shit. I obviously didn't learn because I began to build my mortgage brokerage firm. And we got over 100 different employees inside of our organization. It was fantastic. We built it. I built the first one. I sold it. Built the second one. I sold it. Built the third one. And then shit got spicy. 2007, I'm speaking on stage with Tony Robbins in the Mortgage Planner Summit in Las Vegas, Nevada. Sharing with all my peers, thinking I'm a badass, thinking I got all this shit figured out. Fast forward, New Year's Eve, 2007, heading to 2008, just before midnight. Moon shining through the windows of my bedroom. My wife's looking at me. My wife's cried maybe five times prior to this. Five times, my wife doesn't cry. She's not emotional at all like this. She is now, but then she shut it down. I realized I was the fucking dick that shut her down. But at the time I didn't, and my wife is sobbing. She's crying. She looks at me. She said, I didn't sign up for this. You better fix it. Three more months, I'd let go of everyone. Like sitting down, every single individual, like oh, my mom, I fired my mom, my sisters, my brother, all my friends, fired every, everyone because I tried to save everybody and hired everybody and I had no idea what I was doing. I was terrified and I was scared and I was questioning everything. At the bottom of that fucking hole, and it was a fucking hole, I made one of the greatest mistakes that would shake me to the core. And that is, instead of being able to have the power to talk to my wife, instead of leaning on the woman who had rode through this game with me, who knew me when I had nothing, who rode with me to the top and had rode the roller coaster down to the fucking bottom, instead of having the courage to tell the fucking truth, instead of having the courage to talk about the feelings that were going on inside of me, instead of having the courage to actually have a conversation that fucking mattered, I avoided my my wife, I looked for emotional support in the arms of another woman and I fucking cheat. And some men talk about their affairs and they're like, oh, it's this glorious thing. We were together for like a year and it was amazing and I was in love with her. And, but then I felt like I had to go back to my family and they talk, not me, dude. It was fucking hell. 
Like it was the worst experience of my entire life. Like I fell off of a ledge into a dark crevasse that did not fucking end. And the only way I could deal with my life was to drink most of the day. And inside the bottom of that really dark fucking crevasse hole with the wife who deserved to leave me but didn't have the money to because we had nothing. She had money fucking gone. Nowadays, hell no, fuck you, Garrett, I'm out of here. She is gone. She's like, I don't trust you. You have violated respect. You have violated trust. I don't believe in you. You have ignored me for seven years. And now you don't have any money. You think I should listen to you now? When for seven years with your money, you thought that I was in, I was replaceable, that I was just an object to place on my fucking nightstand, that you don't have to spend time with me. You don't have to listen to me. Because back when we were married in the first year, she'd go on a walk and she, I'm stressed out because I don't know how to deal with this business. I don't understand. I don't, there's so much shit I don't get. I'm getting fined by the state of Nevada. Like, I don't understand how to deal with people and all this stress and I'm fucking freaking out. And she said, well, babe, why don't you do this? And in one of my fits of rage, I turned it and I looked and I said, you are a fucking hairstylist. The next time I need your opinion about business, I will ask for it. Until then, shut your mouth. And so my wife made a decision. This guy's an asshole. I'm going to just spend his money. And then I ran out of money. And then I violated the sacred trust. With not, with not, not with that. I love when, when guys cheat because they like to tell me now we're around literally tens of thousands of men. And I tell the story and guys would be like, I know. And I was like, and you know the craziest part was that I thought I was actually being supported. But what I was was with a woman who actually supported me as a fucking peasant outside the walls of my own castle in my weakest, most disgusting state said, you are the man. And I was not the fucking man. I was a big pussy. I was scared to death. I didn't know how to look at anyone. I didn't know how to talk about the truth. I didn't know what the truth was. I was so confused. I'm so in the bottom of this dark, dark place. No money, no hope, no future. A woman who will not even talk to me or touch me. And I deserved it. I couldn't even look at my kids. Couldn't even look at my girls. I felt like fucking disgusted. I'm sitting there in this piled up mess in the bottom of my basement, this unfinished basement I can't even pay the rent on. And I'm cuddled up in this fucking fetus ball with a bottle of tequila in one hand. I'm just cuddled up in this fucking buzzed out, drunk out, hating, crying, snotting myself place. And inside this place, that same voice came back and said, have you had enough? I was it now. Just have you had enough? Yeah, love it, dude. So, um, do you think? Because you know, one one thing that when I met you at Warrior Week, and one thing that has just had an insane impact on my life is, you know, a saying that you 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 said at that time, which was, um, "Don't go fast, just don't go slow." You know, right? And and the power of reflection. You know, pre Warrior Week, I reflected a little bit. You know, but not. To, I mean, now, man. I mean, I spend. 20, 30 minutes a day in solitude, deep reflection. And, you know, do you, do you think previous to this voice showing up a second time that that voice kept showing up or you were just operating at such a fast capacity that you weren't slowing down enough to reflect and re-listen to that voice and re-gauge with that voice so you had to have that extreme for it to, to reappear in your world? For sure. 100%. The voice is there the whole time. Yeah. Like literally the whole time. Like a GPS, like imagine you got GPS on in your car, but then you got your, you know, you got your Beats headphones in and you're listening to music from your phone. And you keep turning all the wrong directions and crashing into shit. And you're like, fuck! Can somebody give me some goddamn directions? And you look down and you got like duct tape and you like covered up the GPS in your car. You can't hear shit. And you keep wrecking your car. And you're like, God doesn't love me. Universe doesn't care about me. Nobody cares about me. I'm just going to go over here and eat worms. And like, you feel all bad for yourself. And I was, I was feeling horrible about myself. And then it got so bad that I literally couldn't, I couldn't even drive. I was sitting in my wrecked car parked upside down, you know, flipped upside down on the road. And the voice like speaks through because my headphones fall out. And the voice is like, all right, have you had enough? 
And that began the journey, Josh. That began the journey at that point of actually listening. And this entire game of, I had spent my whole life trying to go so fast. I wanted to build everything in a weekend. I wanted to build everything in six months. I was going to be X, Y, Z. Like I have this bullshit story that somehow six months magically would like change my life. I don't know when I began with that story, but that's once I imploded, I would tell my wife everything. Oh, six more months. And then I will literally rebuild everything I have lost in six months. Cause I had no fucking plan. I didn't know what I was going to do. And it was like, it was like being in like a conference with like a bunch of, people trying to like do network marketing or something and nobody's ever made more than like $2,000 a month and somebody stands up on the microphone and they're like, I'm gonna make $500,000 a month in passive income in the next 90 days. And everyone's like, oh my God, go Jeffrey, go, go Jeffrey. Whoa. Now nobody in the whole fucking room cheering has ever having fucking done this. So it's like the blind leading the blind leading the blind leading the blind. And this was like, this was me. I was the guy that would champion this kind of shit. I was in that space. I don't have the wrong network market, but that was me. So I find that this voice says, listen, we're going to restart everything. You're going to question everything that you believe is true. Everything. And you're going to start back at the basics. The basics of who am I and what is the purpose of my life? But like that's about as slowed down as a person can get. It's not like, what am I going to do for work today? How am I going to make money? Am I getting laid today? Nothing. It was like, that shit was way out there. I just slowed down to this simple question. Who am I and what is the purpose of my life? I found out two answers along this journey of slowing down. Started meditating like crazy. I've been meditating since 2009. Like every day, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. I meditate in 20 minute bouts. I studied with a group known as the Ashaya, which were Buddhist who read me through a version of what you might call transcendental meditation. I studied with them like crazy in 2009. I started getting into energy work. I started studying all kinds of Eastern traditions. In 2009, this voice came to me. I left the religion I was raised in. My mother was Catholic and Mormon. Mormon, I left the Mormon church in 2009, not because I had anything wrong with the church. This voice was leading me to literally strip away everything. Like I took every label that was in my life and I stripped them all off. Even the label of Christian, I just stripped everything down to this simple game of who am I? The answer I got after several years of fighting to find out was that I am who I believe myself to be. Yeah, yeah love it, dude. So... I mean, those are such deep questions and, and people struggle. I mean, it, it seems like, I mean, some people go out there and find their purpose, find their why, you know, how do you want to frame it and, and just go out there and take off. But then it, it seems like just as many people struggle with it, that ends up creating more internal suffering. It almost screws them up more than, than before going on that journey. And it took you, you know, several, several years to do this. But it wasn't, it wasn't the three years before you came to that discovery without you taking action. So when you're at that dark moment, dude, as you're going through, you're, you're reinventing yourself, you're going through these questions, you're stripping, you know, peeling back the onion, if you will, going to the core of, of yourself, how do you get yourself to start taking action in that low of a moment? Because most dudes at that point would just break and, and they wouldn't know how to put the pieces back together. How, how do you start taking action and moving forward as you're going through the self-discovery? So everything got broken down into micro goals. Like it got broken down into simple, simple shit I could do every day. I didn't start trying to plan five years down the road. I didn't try to plan like, you know, six months down the road. My world became very small. It became day by day and week by week. That was it. That was the longest that I planned. There were some sustaining things that had to happen inside of my world, which is I had to make some money. But I knew I also was in a place where my certainty was kind of in the shitter when it came to believing in me in that place. So I linked up with my friends who ran companies where I could sell. That's it. I knew I could talk to people. I still cared about people. I could communicate well with people, even though I was in this place trying to figure myself out. And so I would spend and I went and I got a job for the first time since I was a PE teacher. I went. My friend called me his business partner. I wasn't his business partner. I was a W-2 employee for him. And I'm grateful to it to this day. For nine months, I work in a game where I don't have to worry about the money. I got a job. 
and I work for a friend and people, people come to me today and they're like, well, my business isn't getting off the ground. I'm not doing this. And I was like, and in the real estate space, it's really simple. You get realtors who are not getting shit done and you're like, dude, you're not getting shit done because you don't have the psychology or the commitment inside of the skill sets to actually go market, sell and bring transactions, convert those transactions to cash and then duplicate this shit over again. So why don't you go work on a team where people can actually give you some certainty inside of your life and you can be successful helping other people and yourself for a few years. People don't see that piece of me. In 2009, I'm a wingman to a guy named Chris Crone. 2000, no, 2008, I'm a wingman to Garrett V. Gunderson, author of Killing Sacred Cows. 2009, I'm a wingman to Chris Crone. 2010, I'm a wingman to a guy by the name of Brett Harbour. I am a wingman, meaning I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. People see me the guy now. Like I'm like, dude, no, you don't understand. I spent years trying to figure myself out, and the only way I could create the space to do that was to become the wingman for somebody else but it was unacceptable. I was pushing forward, but what I realized that I didn't have then was skill sets. Like not theoretical, oh, you know, I wanna find myself. Okay, I get where you're coming with this. Like that, I was, I, I wanted practical shit. This is why I was pursuing the answers to these questions. Who am I and what is the purpose of my life? The purpose of my life became very simple, to grow. <laughs> For Garrett, is it about returning back to this place, heaven, God, Jesus? What is this? I was like, I, you know, it could be. I don't know. But right now, what I know is the purpose of my life today is to expand. I have to become more today than I was yesterday. The end. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I build some shit or create some shit. I can't do it pontificating. I have to do things and I have to build things and I have to create things. So that's what I did. But I, again, I didn't have enough certainty myself at the point to start creating my own things. So for three years, I linked up and locked up with individuals who were very confident about what they were doing. And I joined their team and I played a role. And I learned and I grew. And with Garrett Gunnarsson, I learned and I grew. And with Chris Crown, I learned and I grew. And I had skill sets that I could contribute to the team. And in 2010, I learned and I grew. In 2011, I launched my own thing. But it took those years of transition. And sometimes, like, guys, I'll, I'll meet people who are in the pit, Josh, and not only are they trying to create way too big of goals out of the pit, they're Hail Marys out of the bottom of the pit. You're like, dude, your first step out of the pit is to grab the ladder and take the first step up. Yeah, but, I, but what am I going to do about my tax problem when I'm making, like, $30 million a year? You're like, Bro, you are not making any money right now. The first thing you need to do is pull your head out of your ass and just grab the ladder. This is why I created the Core 4 system. This is why I had the daily stack. This is why we have the one door and the four keys. This is why we have the game, and I started building the challenge-based lifestyle. The warrior's way became the solution to exactly what you're talking about which was how do I gamify and simplify my life down to actually create results on a daily and weekly basis, even though I'm in the middle of a shit storm. Yeah, love it, dude. So then at what point, so, you, so you've got all this going on, you're going through this self-discovery, you know, uh, how, how did Warrior really come about? I mean, was it just one of these things of you just solving your own problems? And, and, and you know, I know, I mean, you're a dude like me that spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands on self-development. Was it just one of these things where it's like, hey, here was the missing gaps um, that I had to learn and plug in place to solve my own problems. And it became so effective that I can teach other men how to do this. Or at what point did like warrior click and like you knew that this was going to be the path that you wanted to go? So one weekend I went to two events. I went to a meditation retreat and I went to a business conference. Okay. So I'm two of these events the same weekend. I'm sitting in the meditation retreat with all these amazing people who are totally present, they're super amazing, and 98% of them are totally broke. And I'm looking at them, like I have this moment as a businessman where I'm looking at them like, what is wrong with these guys? Like their shit is so great. Why are they not marketing their asses off? What? And, and I have this chink in the game for me that was like frustrating. Or it's like, you are quote so spiritual, but you are so broke. How is it possible? Well, because we don't care about money. Why is the last time I checked, we live on a planet that like kind of requires some currency. Like you don't have money, you realize, and I was laughing when they said it to me because I said, you realize that I actually bankrolled this fucking event for you. 
Like without my money, you're not here. Your flights don't happen. And all these people sitting in this room, all 60 of them, I brought here. That required money. Like you guys don't have, like you don't get it. Like what? And I was like, huh. So then I go over to business conference and I'm walking around talking to a bunch of fucking liars. And I knew they were liars because I had been just like them. And I was sitting listening to them, these guys completely disconnected. Like no, no real purpose outside of get paid. And then hopefully get laid after they got paid. And I'm looking at these guys, I'm like, dude, you guys are like so on point, you're making money and you're hollow. And I looked at these two worlds and I was like, why has nobody connected this? So I figured somebody had put this together. So I started looking, couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. I was like, there has to be a place. So my first business that I launched under this concept was Paid to Play Academy, which was this idea of taking what you do in business and the idea of purpose and putting them together. And we, that was the first launch. And then it kept evolving. And I kept looking and I said, like, this can't just be, like there has to be a way to put this, this idea together. And that's when I started looking even further down the path of what affects me as a businessman. Here's what I can tell you. If I'm not connected to my wife, I have left less confidence in business. Like, I don't know how it goes with you, but like, that's like, that is with me. Like if I have amazing sex with my life on a Thursday night, and then I have a big business negotiation on Friday morning, I walk in completely bullish. If I'm like in 14 days of the goddamn Sahara Desert, no sex, no connection, me and my wife are fighting, my kids are all over the place, I'm having arguments with my parents. If all of my relationship shit is in chaos, it affects me coming into business. So I started seeing that if I wanted to dig myself out in a productive way, I needed to get on point with my wife. And that's when my wife instituted Date Your Wife, which we actually launched a new podcast just two weeks ago. Um, called Date Your Wife, which is fantastic. The first time my wife's gotten on, on the mic with me, we like fantastic, we like rose through the red charts on our very first show together. The second show, she introduced a strategy called Quickie Quickie Porn Star, which I had never <laughs> known that was a strategy. I was wondering, I was like, man, it seems like just about what I'm like, ah, come on, can we have some like, nah. She like pulls some shit out of her ass and pulls this like performance. And I'm like, what the hell was that? That was incredible. I want, who was that person? She needs to come back again. But then she like keeps me on the edge for a few weeks. And so I, I didn't know how to make that happen. Though. So I started just taking my wife out on dates every week. And then I started sending notes to my kids every day. And I noticed it started making me feel better as a man. And it gave me more confidence. And so then I looked at other things. I was like, okay, well, what other things are happening? Well, physical fitness. I realized in my body that when I worked out and when I drank green smoothies, my body felt better. Then, so I started doing it. I, was, I mean, I was already working out, but I started being deliberate about it. I started tracking it. And I started gamifying it. And I would get points for working out. And I would get points for drinking a green smoothie. I would get a points for spending, sending a text to my wife and a points for sending a text to my kids. And then I came to being, another place that I was losing power. And I was like, well, what's going on with the being side? Well, meditation, purpose. And I started tracking that. And I just started making my life work like any KPI in a business. If we come over to the real estate side and you're a real estate broker and you're watching this, here's are you listening to this, here's the reality. You need leads. You need listings. You need closings. You need fundings. And then you need to start over again. You need leads. You need listings. You need closings. You need fundings. And payday. And then do it over again. Like this is fact. Right? But there's a shitload of stuff that's affecting your certainty to tactically do it. That's why you, you could learn all the tactics necessary inside of being a realtor in about five seconds. All right? Or live. About two hours. But you come to Josh's show every week for the same fucking reason. It's not because you tactically don't know how to be a realtor. It's not because you don't know what to do. It's not because you don't understand that I need leads, I need listings, I need closings, I need fundings, and I get paid. Like, it's not complicated. All businesses work this way. Get leads, get closings, get paid. The end. But you don't do it because you're weak. And you need more power. And you need more capacity. And you need more belief in order to pull off and do the simple shit that's required to pull it off. It's not because you're an idiot. It's not because you're broken. It's not because you don't know what to do. It's not because it's hard or it's technical. No, you're hard. You're the issue. You're the fucking problem. 
And the minute that you recognize I'm the problem, you can start to put some shit together, which is all what the core four game became. And now we have apps and gamified software that I'm like almost a million dollars into and we track this shit and we compete with each other like it's CrossFit games only with core four in the Warriors way. And we compete with guys in 27 countries and we gamify. I gamified my life to results. But I did it from this place of trying to find power. Yep. No, I love that, man. And, and one thing, you know, going through Warrior Week, um, which was obviously the first time that I, back then, you know, they didn't have the amazing tools that you have uh, now available. Where everybody can learn this stuff from these amazing books. And, and, and uh, uh, but dude, you know, from following guys like Tim Ferriss and whatever, you know, several years before meeting you and coming through, through Warrior Week, you know, I mean, I started the morning routines and, and was doing that stuff. But the core four, you know, being a business guy, like I'm all about systems, processes, and tracking, you know, right? Like I've got to have a matrix for everything. And it was the first trackable way of really being able to, to, to track it on a daily basis and see how you're doing and see how you're improving. And I mean, it's the first system that I've ever been introduced to and even ever seen yet to this point, you know, that, that breaks it down in such a simplistic but trackable fashion where you can track that on a daily basis. Well, and it's all, it's all about daily power. Like, that's it. Like, again, I realized that I, I couldn't just hope that I woke up on fire. Yeah. I couldn't hope that, you know, three coffees with, you know, an extra double espresso was going to make, going to make sure that I really got shit done today. Right. We can't get shit done if we can't access power. So you guys can sit and listen to Josh all day long, get shit done, get shit done, get shit done. You're like, fuck, I know I got to get shit done. Or in my world's like, do the fucking work. Same concept, Josh saying, I'm saying, we're both saying the same thing, which is like, hey, dude, guess what? You're the problem, and one of the big problems you face is you don't have enough power every single day to actually fuel the necessary actions required to produce the results that you desire. So if you're not getting the results that you desire, you don't have a production problem, you have a power problem. Because it's not that you don't know what to do, it's that you're not doing it. So then we come back to how do we get in power? That's it. Core four became a simple way, but core four sometimes isn't enough. It helps a guy get down the path. But like me, I had to go to the pit. Like it took me to the pit. Like I had to go to the pit and I had to stop lying. So between you and power are lies. Between you and power are stories. So even if you do the technical things that are required, even if you make the calls you're supposed to make, even if you make the conversations happen, you get the listings you're supposed to get. Your energy is wrapping up everything around in those. Transactions are not happening because people don't trust you. People are bailing from listings or they're canceling or they're changing or they're staying at ridiculously high prices, not coming down because they're just trying to get rid of you. Why? Because they don't trust you. And why don't they trust you? Because you don't trust yourself. I'll give you a simple example here. Realtor trying to sell us a house here. Such a lying bitch. I mean, such a fucking lying bitch, this woman. And I sat with her in this first transaction. We just, we just, we closed on a $10 million house here in Orange County, right on the beach. And I was looking at another house. And this woman was like, I didn't trust her for a second. She was lying. Like I could tell, I could feel it in her. She was hyping up the game on this other property and da 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 da. And I would confront her with real questions and she couldn't come back with real answers. She would continue to dance around and dance around. And finally, in the middle of it, she's like, she's playing this weird game, and I don't trust her. My wife's like, I don't trust that woman. I was like, I know, because she's a liar. Like, then she's a liar. It's not even about the numbers. I was like, the woman is inherently a liar. She is masking, hiding, filtering, and sedating the shit out of herself. She's the 58-year-old realtor that filters the shit out of herself and makes her look 23. Quit fucking putting your pictures on your goddamn business cards on your websites from 20 years ago. Holy shit, realtors, what the fuck is wrong with you? God damn it, if I see another woman or man that I meet that's like 63 years old with a 40-year-old picture of themselves, I'm going to be like, like literally, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. That was this woman, by the way. I should have known right away. When I saw her picture, we show up and meet her. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. you like, literally, you are 20 years older than this picture. What's wrong with you? By the way, realtors are the only industry in the world that does that shit. You guys need to knock that fucking virus off. Just slap the shit out of people that have pictures of themselves. They're 20 years too young. All right. So then I make the decision to buy, right? Well, we bought from a guy because he was straight with us from the beginning. The moment I started talking to this guy before numbers, we weren't even considering the place that we bought. 
But in the first conversation with him, this guy owned who he was. And you could tell he's a luxury home sales, sales realtor in Orange County. Average transactions are six to eight million. These guys don't play the same. Josh, you're in this space. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They don't fucking play the same. They don't play this pussy bullshit, $50,000 $50, condo, hack and lion bullshit. My picture 20 years younger than I was bullshit. Like these guys are legit and they know they're dealing with legit people. And he walked in on me and my wife and the first five minutes I trusted this guy. And when I asked him hard questions, he gave me straight hard answers. And he was good at what he did. But the thing at the end of the day that we trusted the most about him was, is I knew he listened to us and I knew he was telling the truth. And that was my challenge is that I was not a man who could be trusted. And in the worst place, I didn't trust myself. I just didn't trust myself, but I expected the world to trust me, but I didn't even trust myself. I didn't trust the voice inside of me. I didn't trust, I didn't trust who I was. I didn't trust who I was as a man. I didn't trust who I was as a husband, as a father. I didn't, tr like, inherently, truthfully, as hyped up as I would get, Mr. Motivation. I was Captain Hollow Motivation guy. But there was a depth. You go back and watch videos from mine about five, six years ago. You will hear a distinct difference between my voice now. Like, literally, the energy of my videos and my audios are different. <laughs> And all that's changed is the rising certainty inside of myself because I stripped away the lies. I stripped away the bullshit. And I've learned to deal with my bullshit when it comes up today, not pushing it away and letting it go down for two years and then having to force myself to deal with it. And this is the process that we're all in. Every day I deal with my shit and then I go to work. That's it. I deal with my shit. I go to work. What do I do to deal with my shit? I wake up at five o'clock. I hit my core four. I do eight specific actions across body, being, balance, and business. Then I hit a powerful tool, which Josh, we didn't even have back in the day when you came, which is a tool called the stack, which lets me deal with my bullshit, put it into a productive way and go attack the shit that I'm after every single week, which I call the one door and the four keys. Every Sunday, I sit down in the general's tent. I review the week that I had before. I set targets for the new week, and I go to war again. Every quarter, I set up challenges across body, being, balance, and business. My weekly general's tents are assessing how the work I'm doing through the week is leading me towards those challenge outcomes. The end. But I can give you all that map. You can pick up the whole fucking map by going and getting WorryBook at WorryBook.com. But guess what? For many of you, it won't be enough. You want to know why? Because you need a radical two by four across the face. Yeah. Yep. And and that's uh, you know to, that's where your week is you know right. I'm, and again, I'm I just picked up the book well, about a month or so ago. As soon as I say it, can't say I'll come out. You know, and, and everything is unpackaged in this book. You know, obviously there's some new things in here from when I went through Warrior Week uh, three years ago that you guys have expanded and you've leveled up on. But dude, it's all in here. Great information, life-changing information, a book that I recommend everybody to read. And I, I know that Warrior Week is, is for, for men, but this is a book that every man and, and woman should be reading, right? Um, but I will tell you from going through the experience and reading the book, the book is, is a game changer. But going through it and going through that experience is, is just revolutionary, right? There, there's just no comparison to that next level. Um, so, you know, one thing, we kind of talked about this before we hit the record button, but, you know, one thing that just impresses me so much about you and, and I see this more in you probably than any other human being that I've met is the consistency, you know, right? There's no magic pill here. It's just like, Hey man, I'm doing these things. I'm doing them consistent day in and day out and, and going after that expansion. That's what allows that expansion to go. Can you just maybe elaborate on the power of consistency and, and what that plays into your success? Yeah. So, you know, Darren Hardy, right? Yep. Okay. So a few years ago, Darren Hardy was like talking about when he launched his book, The Compound Effect, which by the way, is a great book, super simple, speaks to a concept. It was so funny though, because back in the day when I was listening to him the very first time I was in my pit, I was at a business event. He got invited there as a speaker. It was 2010. I was there as a wingman with my man, Chris Crone, um, or no, it was 2009. I was on a wingman with Chris Crone uh, from a company called Strongbrook and <clears throat> I'm listening to Darren talk about the compound effect. I couldn't even listen though. Like, I mean, I didn't even know what the fuck he was saying. 
Which is yeah. so crazy because the compound effect is exactly what you're talking about. It's the compound effect of doing simple shit and what simple shit over long periods of time end up creating. Compound interest, compound action. Like it was brilliant. Like it was brilliant. But just like speaking of in all kinds of spiritual texts, this idea that we don't have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to feel. Well, dude, many of us are just not ready to hear it. And because we're not ready to hear it, it's masked from us. Like the book was in my hands. I still didn't really get it. So then fast forward a couple of years and my life got so complex, Josh, like I couldn't, like it was hard for me to survive day to day, like survive, not thrive, like survive. Like I felt so much pressure and so much stress and so much overwhelming anxiety about the future and feeling so much judgment of myself, so much shame, so much guilt. The finally got to this place where I was like, dude. I may not be capable to ever set long-term targets again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to doing something today. Okay. I'll give you an example. How this plays out in nutrition. So people go on diets. They try to change things. They lose a bunch of weight. We have guys who do in warrior. They lose a bunch of weight, 90 days. We've got guys who's 50, 60, 70 pounds in 90 days, right? It's fantastic. Of the guys that lost weight, the vast majority of them put 50% or more of it back on. Okay, so I looked at nutrition differently. I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend the entire year and I'm going to become addicted to replacing one thing inside of my diet. So I wake up in the morning, I have a five hour energy. It's what I do every morning. I just do it. I don't know if this is a coffee thing. I just do my five hour energy. I like it. I wake up, I do five hour energy. I have a cliff bar, kids cliff bar. Why do I like kids cliff bar? Because I'm addicted to it. I like it. It's part of my routine. I do it. And I just have those two things. Then I go out and I surf. I come back from surfing and I drink a green smoothie in a Vitamix with a blender every single day. Then I, I, like I just started adding small things, but I would add something for a quarter. I would say, I'm gonna do green smoothies and I'm never going to stop. I'm, there's no finish line. This isn't like I'm going to start this so then I can celebrate because I accomplished this nutrition challenge 90 days from now. Or like a lot of business people do, they hustle and grind really hard to hit the quarter. They get the trophies. They get the fucking awards. They go to the Christmas party at their brokerage and they're like, oh yeah, Woo! I am top producer in my office and my picture is literally 30 years younger than how I actually look. But fuck you guys because I'm number one. Then they spend the next six months trying to recover. Like, they're so exhausted, but they recover. Hence the statement, you don't have to go fast, just don't go slow. You don't have to go fast, just don't go slow. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a green smoothie. Then this last year, I added these supplements from doTERRA. I put these supplements inside. So my mom had been talking about it forever. I added these supplements every single day, and I took them every single day. I didn't have any plans to stop. So there was never a finish line. And I wasn't trying to go fast. I just started adding pieces. Then I added breakfast. I do the same thing for breakfast every single morning. Oatmeal, eggs, bacon, fruit, the end. My entire, I'm now to lunchtime. My entire nutrition over three to five years has been completely automated, dialed in, and I'm addicted. But I didn't try to change it over 90 days. So people are like, well, how do you stay so fit? I was like, it's really easy. I don't try to stay fit. I become addicted to small things that give fitness an ease. Money, same thing. I never stop marketing. Never. I market every single day. People are like, well, how do you post? How do you get new ideas every day? I was like, I, I told myself that's what I was going to do. We just deployed four brand new podcasts. Four. Warrior Week, Date Your Wife, Big Money Stylist, and Warrior Wealth, which is the first show I'm publishing on money. All people, how are you doing these podcasts? Well, because I proved to myself that I could do 700 episodes at 10 minutes a day for three years. I turned on a phone and I yelled into it and I wanted to quit 10,000 times. And I did quit for about nine months. And then I came back again and I went and I went and I went and I proved to myself and I made it an addiction. So there are skill sets inside of being a producer that if you're not addicted to them, it won't matter. You have to be addicted to marketing. You have to be addicted to closing, selling. You have to be addicted to collecting cash. 
Like it has to become who you are. It's not what you do. What I do is I market every single day. What I do is I run ads every single day. What I do is I spend 100, 200, 300,000 a month in advertising every single fucking month and I will never slow down. But guess what that started with? That started with $500. Our greatest target inside the game with Wake Up Warrior is being a million dollars a month in advertising. We'll be there by the end of this year. And people are like, how do you get to a million dollars in advertising? It's really easy. You started doing 50. And you say, I will never stop marketing. There is no finish line. I'm not going to quit. Well, what are you going to do to fix your marriage? Well, I'm going to start by going on a date. Well, how often? Every week. That's why we launched Date Your Wife, the podcast, because I, it's so funny. You know how many marriages have been completely altered by this one simple strategy? Well, my marriage is just this and this. And I was like, well, fuck everything I'm saying. Just do one thing. What is it? Just go on a date every single week. No kids, no friends, nobody. Just you and your queen, your wife, or if you're a woman listening, you and your man, you go on a date You every single week, every single week, non-negotiable. Well, and then what do I do? Talk. And then what? You don't ever stop doing that. You just do that one thing. Well, should we go to therapy? Should we go on a retreat? Should we go to Cancun? Should we do this? Should we have, should we have a sex therapist? Should we do this? And no, no, right now what I want you to do is just go on a date. Should we read like what books, what books? Should we, should we study five love languages? Should we do this, Karen? Should we, should we become certified in love language? No, you dumb motherfucker. Just go on a date. <laughs> well, when? I don't give a shit. Pick a day. Well, how about Wednesday? Okay. What time are you going to go? Six o'clock. All right, great. What are you going to do next Wednesday? I'm going to go on a date. So I just started picking small things every week, but I don't pick targets to do and be done. I pick targets and habits and skill sets that become who I am, but I don't do enough to make me overwhelmed to a point of breaking. I take on a few new ones. Surfing's an addiction for me now. It's not what I do, it's an addiction. It's what I am. Surfing is a lifestyle for me now, but seven months ago I couldn't surf. Yeah, yeah I love it, man. It reminds me of Jim Rohn's famous quote, success is not a doing process, it's a becoming process. So you're not focused on doing, you're focused on, on it becoming such an ingrained habit that you've now become, it becomes a part of you, as you're saying. Yep. And that's what Core 4 does. Like Core 4 as a science and as a daily system and a game, it gives you exactly that. It gives you a very simple way to metrically track your life. And the production side of it is the one door and the four keys married up to everything inside of the software that we have, everything. But it all begins with understanding what's in Worrybook. Now, for some of you guys listening, though, you're going to need a swift kick in the dick. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you're, you're not – just getting the right information isn't going to shift you enough. <clears throat> this is what we built Worry Week for. Worry Week is a crucible. It was built to allow a man to come in in a 30-day prep and then a four-day experience and to radically alter the trajectory of his entire life and for the first time let him feel like he is not alone. It starts sometimes when you're doing this one, like you sit on the other side, and that's why some of you guys are mentoring, coaching, many of you are coaching with Josh, and you're, you're part of his programs and part of his systems, and you need to be. And many of you listening to this, you're not, and you're a dumbass. And you should be. And some of you, I don't even know if you have a program where you get to work like even more intimately and close with you, Josh, but if you do, and that's part of the game, some of you guys right now, you're not going to get enough from just being part of the baseline game. You're going to have to level up and go all in. Like, and the cost of not going all in, like literally you sitting here right now, continuing to watch these podcasts and not do shit, the cost is in the millions to you. So we built Warrior Week as a crucible to radically alter the direction of men. There's so many guys with Joshua Kendall Warrior Week got altered and then went on to launch like all the cool shit they always wanted to launch. This show and me even being here, it's like fun for me. Cause I'm like, I remember back when Josh was just talking about this and just getting this off the ground. Yep, 100% man. So, so again, you know, I mean the, the book, I know Warrior Week and, and, and your advanced, uh, uh, you've got Warrior Week and obviously you've got advanced coaching after that is, is specific to men. But for, for those that are watching or listening, I mean, I, I just got done reading this book in, the, in its entirety, and I, I, I don't see any reason why, I mean, every single man and woman shouldn't read this book. And then when it comes, comes to Warrior Week, man, I mean, those that may see the book, that, that really relate with the book, that want more, as you said, that feel like they need, need more of the experience, 
Um, but I mean, who, who really is warrior week for? Cause I know that you're one of these guys who has done as good of a job as any human being that I've seen at it in, in the marketing space of you've really niched down. Like, you know, who your program is for and who it's not like, who is, if somebody's thinking if they're stuck in life, man, if they're bored, whatever it may be, they're not getting that excitement. They're not listening to that internal voice. They need that wake up call, which is wake up warrior. Um, who, who is wake up warrior or the warrior week for? Uh, Warrior Week's built for married businessmen with kids. It's like the trifecta. It's the trifecta. You take a man and may have, turn him, put him into a business owner, and this could be an individual producer whose sole responsibility, like as a realtor, I could be my own self as a realtor, not have a team, just be me. But you're a business owner. Inside of that, you you are you hunt every day. You get paid. You don't get paid. Your family lives or dies off of this. So it's men who are in the place of the controller income that can control their destiny. Second, they're married. And here's why. Because being married is a challenge. Being a business owner is a challenge. Add married onto being a business owner, and you now have the double deuce. Now, third, add children to the mix. Oh, shit. Now you have just culminated the trifecta. Now I got some kids. I got my wife. I got my business. You put those three together and you will see more chaos inside of that trifecta than just about anything you'll ever see from a man in regardless of situation or circumstance. Now we have single guys who come through Warrior Week and even all of it's a case by case. We have guys who are executives in companies who have come through Warrior Week. Um, we have guys who have been employees who have come through Warrior Week. And each of those are a case by case basis and you can apply and check out more of that by going to warriorweek.com and get to experience the movie that we have there. And if the movie connects with you, you fill out an application, you get into an interview. You know, right now I just got update notification from, from my team today, from Coach Sam Falsafi, who actually runs our um, Worry Weeks. And he gave me the numbers on. We are sold out through to Worry Week 47, which is April. And we have almost sold out 48, almost sold out 49. And Warrior Week 49 is our final uh, private or public event, which means we will not offer the smaller 12 to 15 man Warrior Weeks um, to the public anymore. You'll have to actually be internal in our brotherhood. You'll have to be in a certain level of rank in order to actually participate in those bets. There'll be a Warrior Week that opens up in the fall that is for a large group. Um, and will be a very intense experience and amazing experience too. But uh, yeah, the game changes. So, but worryweek.com is where you find out more information about that. You can watch a movie there. There's a documentary. It's about 45 minutes to an hour. It'll tell you stories of the men. You get to see some of the evolution, some of the experience. And if it connects with you, you'll know what to do. And it'll tell you what to do, which is you'll apply. And that application will lead you into a conversation with my training team and they'll decide whether you're fit or not. Yeah, love it. And it's so critical those that are watching, listen. I mean, it gets to the point where, and, and I see this way more often than not in the business world of, you know, somebody's creating big success in business, they're doing well there, but every, the rest of their life is crumbling, right? Their marriage is, is falling, their health is, is becoming shitty, they have no relationship with their kids, and they're massively unfulfilled in, in life. And I mean, business is going great, but every other aspect is, uh, is just falling apart. And like you said, I mean, their business trajectory can just massively take leaps and bounds if they get intentional with that other stuff. You know, what always scares me is we've all met and seen the dude that crushes it in business, has the fat bank account, um, you know, but, but health is gone. They're, they're on their third or fourth marriage. They don't know their kids at the end of their life and they end up just being freaking miserable. Those my neighbors. Yep. Literally, yep. literally all my neighbors. I'm not kidding you. They're like my, my neighbor's building right next to me. Came down after we moved in. Um, and a neighbor who kind of welcomed us in and he came out and we started having a conversation and talking and in less than five minutes he's telling me everything he's on his fourth marriage um, his kids with three women uh, doesn't see his kids and I, as I shared my story with him he's like dude that's exactly me he's like only I'm 62 now yeah. I know like, and I live in a county I'm in divorce rate in Orange County is 84% uh, everybody here is looking to upgrade, upgrade wife, upgrade home, upgrade cars. Like it's a very fit, very driven, very different than like a New York vibe, but like it is. And we've been here for almost five years and like, it's just very different. So you see the chaos here, but you see the chaos all over the place. And men who are just looking and then you get the other side of the spectrum, which is men who are super good men and in as fathers and, and, and husbands. 
uh, but they can't put the money together. Yeah. And so the kids are suffering because they don't pull the trigger and their wife is losing trust every single day. They might not be cheating, but they're cheating in the sense that they're not providing. And because they're not providing, you're like, dude, you might as well be cheating. You're not providing, you're no better off. I listen to men who are like, well, you know, I'm a really great father. I was like, you're a really great father, really? Because last time I checked, when your kids asked to get the singing lessons that they need, you couldn't afford it, so fuck you. You're not being a great father. You don't get to just play one card. I spend time with my kids. No, you get to do it all. You get to love their mother. You get to spend time with and invest in your kids. You get to have cash to support the kingdom so that you can take family on trips and do things that matter. You get to take care of your body so that you actually stay around long enough and have the energy to actually do life with the ones that matter the most. And you get to feel purpose because a man on purpose has never been more attractive to a woman. And you line all those things up, you live the warrior's way. And that's what we do. We teach men how to live the warrior's way so they can go off and explode and build cool shit like get shit done and build leaders who were always leaders but found themselves accelerating just like Josh has done. I can't take all the credit. We can't take any of the credit. We bounced Josh. He was already a fucking powerhouse. That's why you're here with him. But we got to be one of many organizations and individuals that got to bounce into Josh and say, dude, go faster. You got this. And that's all my life is. And that's what my commitment is across the board. It's what I do in the hair industry. We run salons. We have hundreds of clients in the side of our salons. We have hundreds of stylists that train for us and work for us. And my wife and I, and the same impact. Like all of it is about growth. If you don't want to grow, get a job and go work for somebody who does. And maybe they'll be able to coerce and connect you to that possibility. But for the rest of you, Warrior Book could be a great start for you. Worst case scenario, check out the podcast, Warrior on Fire, um, in iTunes. And and obviously for some of those who are brave men who've decided that the time fucking around and you want the fast track, well, we can give you the fast track like a shot to the heart of adrenaline. Uh, jump in at warriorweek.com, watch the movie, and apply. Yeah. No, couldn't agree more. And, and you guys, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I've obviously done all three and tuned in all three. If you, if you haven't checked out his podcast, the podcast is off the hook, man. It's 10 minutes or so of, of it's really the, I always get asked, you know, as a podcast host, sometimes I feel guilty, but they're like, what podcast do you listen to? I'm like, I'm so busy creating my own damn podcast. <laughs> I don't have time, but, but yours is quick. It, it, it's, but dude, the messages are always so fucking powerful. Right. Um, so I highly recommend that you guys go check that out. Um, definitely go get the book and uh, I can't recommend warrior week enough, man. It's, it's for, for, you know, some of you, it might seem like a substantial investment but at the end of the day, dude, it's such a small investment to go out there and change your life. And I promise you from a dude that's experienced it, um, it will absolutely change your life. So, um, um, make sure to take action on that. And then, you know, Garrett, one, one other thing that I just want to, I know we're going long on time, but I just wanted to have you elaborate on dude is the one thing I love about you, dude, is, is you're not, I mean, there's always freaking gurus out there. Right. And, and a lot of these guys that aren't in the trenches, aren't in the game. I mean, obviously you're living, eating, breathing, everything that you're talking about in the warrior way or in, in, in warrior week and everything that you're doing in this movement, you know, but you're also this massive student, you know, right? Like I watch you almost daily and I, I don't know if I've seen a better marketer than you. So, so even if nothing else, you want to become a better marketer, go follow Garrett on Facebook because I've never seen anybody that's a better online digital marketer than Garrett and, and being able to create magnetic messages that connect and strike those emotional cords. I mean, you're the best of the best out there, but I mean, you're leveling up with your self-development on a constant uh, a basis with that expansion and growth. You know, kind of, kind of elaborate on that and the importance that that's played um, in your overall success in your life. There's no possible way, none, that I could have gotten where I am by myself. No way. Um, I have a list. Like we sat down and we drew out the list so I could do kind of like the, the chronological, like family tree lineage thing of who was the first coach, mentor, what was the first book, what was the webinar that shifted me, et cetera. And we drew out this long ass game from the time that first question happened for me in 2000 as a PE teacher. Like we just drew out all the things that had to happen to get to where I am. And literally between there and here, there were over 65 mentors that I hired or paid as coaches or masterminds that I joined. And there were over a hundred information products that I bought. And there were tens of thousands of hours spent refining my craft. Like it, it is like, I can't get enough. My greatest frustration nowadays 
is finding high enough level groups for me to continue to be pushed. So every week, every year I join a bunch of groups, every year I hire different coaches. Um, we just, we hired another consultant to come in and work with us. Um, and he worked for one visit. I paid him for the year and then I was done. Uh, not because he wasn't amazing, but it just, it's very difficult. One of the things that I'm very committed to inside of my game now is I realized back then what I was looking for by hiring a lot of the people I was hiring, I probably could have got to where I am with a third of them. But a lot of the money that I spent and the hiring that I was doing was to give myself permission to just do the shit I needed to do. So I would hire another coach or I would pay for another program so that I could do the shit I needed to do. And it worked. Nowadays, one of the powerful tools of the stack inside the Warriors way is that every single day I get to collide with myself. The phrase that we use with the stack or the Warrior stack is, I am my own guru. I am my own therapist. I am my gateway back to God. Like, I don't need somebody outside of me always to help me find my path. But what I do need is people to bounce me back into remembrance and awaken me to remember of the shit that I committed to do. And so every morning I get some of the richest insights that come, not from just journaling. This is not random, write my thoughts down. It's a strategic science and a system inside of a productive tool called the stack, which helps you throw in one in the garbage disposal, all your triggered emotion, rage, excitement, passion, fire, disappointment, shame, guilt, shove it into the fucking blender, squeeze the tube out. And at the end, you come out with a little cube of action that actually moves things forward for you in business and in life. And that's my greatest excitement. Like I never used to want to spend time with myself in contemplation, Josh. Like I, I wanted to go listen to someone else tell me cool shit. And, and I didn't ever think my shit was cool. Like my wife will walk in sometimes I'll be watching my own videos and she's like, are you literally like <laughs> your own videos right now? I was like, this is a really fucking good video. Like, man, I was on it. Like there's some shit coming through me on that video. I was really, I'm taking some fucking notes. She's like, Oh my God. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like sometimes I'm saying things that I wasn't planning on. They just kind of come through me. So there's a, there's a certain level in which you've got to appreciate the growth you have as an individual and trust that you actually have grown and that you've got some things to contribute to the marketplace and the world. And on the flip side, you always gotta be, you've gotta be pinging yourself. Like you can't get to a place where you just believe all your bullshit. Like there's a, you get delusional at every level, no matter how good you get, no matter how big you get. Like here's what I know, I have a painting in my office at my house, I have a little man cave. I had a client's mother-in-law paint this picture of me off of a picture it has this warrior crest and the chains in it. I was wearing a blue suit and she painted this for me and gave it to me for Christmas because her daughter is married to one of our guys in warrior and their marriage and life completely turned on a 180 and he changed. He like literally died and became a new man. And she was so ecstatic by it that she hand painted this picture of me and it looks older. Like when you look at it, my wife thinks it's creepy because I have this painting of myself. Like, and my grandpa used to have these paintings of stuff like, like with military and it was all like these paintings and it looked all kind of like old and old school. And I had this painting of myself that they gave me for Christmas. I loved it. Some people are like, oh, it's fucking horrible. I'm like, I love it. And I put this painting up and I have to walk by it every morning when I go take a piss right when I wake up. And this guy I look at to me is 61 years old and he's a billionaire. And I'm like, I'm going to be a fucking billionaire. Like there's no question about it. In 20 years, what I did from 21 to 41 will be fucking dwarfed by what I do between the 41 and 61. Like game fucking over. And because of the fact that I'm playing every single day, the simple, for simplest form of the game, I'm not trying to make it complex, I'm just doing more compounded work. Add today what I did tomorrow, or did yesterday, and tomorrow do again what I did today, but make the alteration and course correction through the warrior's way. And as I do this, my life itself improves. This message comes to me every time I look at the picture. It says, just keep going. No miracle, no Hail Mary, no fucking magic pill, no like magical formula. There's just the work and there's getting shit done. If you get shit done, great. If you're not sure what the fuck to do, hard to get shit done that will actually move you forward. And some of you, as you listen to this, the biggest challenge you have with what Josh is sharing, isn't the fact that Josh has been telling you and giving you the greatest clues on what to do. It's the fact that you're stuck inside your own shit. And so in order to get shit done, you have to get the shit out of your eyes. You've got to get it out of your world so that you can actually get it done. Yeah. Love it, man. Couldn't agree more, dude. And just, just one last question for you. I know we're going long on time, but uh, you know, if the Garrett today, 
knowing everything that you know now, the Garrett today could go back and have a conversation with the Garrett as you started this movement um, and give yourself just two pieces of advice that you feel would have just massively, uh, uh, you know, increased your trajectory to success here. What would those two pieces of advice look like? And maybe, maybe it wasn't when you started the warrior movement, but maybe, maybe it was, you know, that moment on the football field. What, at whatever point, if the, the Garrett today could go back to a younger version of yourself, what would those two pieces of advice look like? One, tell the truth faster. Don't keep it inside. Two, you're not alone. Everyone else is hiding. Like, that's it. Like, those two simple things, lying and thinking I was alone, cost me years. Someone could punch me in the face when I was 19 years old and say, dude, the fastest path to power and production and prosperity is to tell the truth and tell it fast and tell it often. Second piece is understand that everybody's hiding. And if you're the most honest man in the room, you will control the show because everyone else is worried they're going to be exposed. And if you have nothing to fucking hide and you put it all on Facebook and on your blog and on YouTube and on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher so that anyone everywhere could find out all your shit, when you walk into a room, you're the only one that has nothing to hide. And when you have nothing to hide, you literally own the game. So I said, man, I was terrified for decades, but it wasn't enough, so I made up stories. I would not share all the truth with people because I was afraid if they knew the whole truth about me, that they would run away, they would leave me, they would be done with me. Tell the truth faster and more frequent. Number two, remember and understand you're not alone and everybody's hiding. Yeah, love it. Powerful stuff. And those that are watching, listen, I know interview podcasts with this, but information without implementation truly is just a start of delusion. Information is no longer power. It's taking that information, taking massive action on it that creates the power in your life for you to go out there and create the life you know you want and truly deserve. And Garrett shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you guys today. Take something that you learned and take immediate action on it. So again, you can create the life you truly know you want and deserve. And below in the show notes, I don't care where you're watching, where you're listening, will be all the links below to go get Garrett's uh, new book. Go Go check out Warrior Week. Go check out his podcast. Again, I highly recommend you do all, all of the above. Um, so go take action on that. Check those out right away. And Garrett, man, this has been a massive honor. I know how busy you are, dude. I truly appreciate you being here, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. We will see you next time. Thanks, guys.